Again, welcome to lab three for uh, physics 11. From the outright, I will have to tell you something about the next lab. We're going to switch the order. I think next week's lab is supposed to be uh, conservation of momentum. Instead, we're going to do projectile motion first, and then we come back to the conservation of momentum. Uh, uh, projectile motion should really be immediately after we do uh, introduction to motion. We do a projectile motion, which is a case of a two-dimensional motion. And then we should have done, so the order is a little bit, um, not how normally labs are in order, but I basically followed how the college had them before. But next time around, if I'm teaching this class again, I will, I will definitely uh, reorder these labs. At least I will have the introduction of motion followed by the projectile motion, then we do the vectors, then we do the Newton's second law of motion, then the momentum and continue there, uh, thereafter in the order there. So next lab is on projectile motion, and not on the uh, conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum will be delayed to the 24th. So the 17th of September will be the projectile, the 24th will be the momentum. So that's just a word of warning before we start. Also, a new way of doing business, I think it worked last time, where we actually, uh, after we finish the live session, basically, the one that is recorded for the ones who are not here, uh, with the instructions and going through basically the different questions where we actually answer the questions in here, all of them, uh, I will uh, leave the session open. Stop the recording, but leave the session open until 9, 10 p.m. or whenever the last person leaves, basically. What I want you guys to do is actually use the entire time that is allotted for the la lab to actually do the actual lab. I will change speakers. I will leave the laptop speaker then on, basically just to, if I step out to grab something or something, if you, somebody has a question or something, turn your microphone on and ask out loud, I will hear you. I will come in here and then basically uh, continue and answer whatever question you have. So in other words, we'll continue the lab. We'll go through the uh, recorded session first through basically the steps and the instructions and all of that thing for the lab. And then once we do that, we we'll stop the recording at that point. And then we uh, uh, leave this, uh, the, uh, the session open so that you guys can work together, ask each other questions, post comments basically in the chat session. And uh, when you feel like you have it all handled, the lab is ready to go. Or the only thing is some minutia here and there, or probably take a picture or do graph by hand or something. Then you can finish that and submit it, hopefully, before the weekend, everything is done. Now, if you have a question, please do ask a question so that we can make this thing move smoother. Does this sound like a better plan now? Yes? Good, okay, very good. So, very good. So this is, I think, the, uh, the operation from now how we're going to do this labs. So let me go into the instructions quickly, if I can find the... Uh... So the lab today is about the Newton's second law of motion. This is basically F equals to MA. Don't forget to put your name in here. The grading for this, uh, for this uh, lab is actually with the rubric. It has a very high grading points for this one. It's because of these tables. There are so many tables in this lab, but they are all coming from uh, similar data basically sets. So you have to be very careful with this lab through these tables. You could lose a lot of points in this table. So please make sure the tables are done right. And then in addition to the tables, you have a bunch of graphs in this table, in this is the lab. You have this graph, which you must turn in, and you have, these two graphs, uh, the acceleration as a function of force and the acceleration as a function of uh, one over uh, the mass. So you have these two sets of labs basically that you're going to turn in. I mean, to the, this sets of uh, data that you're going to turn in in the tables and also the graphs. That's where most of the points are. Every question, you know how much it's worth towards two points. Uh, the objective is worth three points and the uh, uh, the uh, conclusion is worth five points and everything is in the rubric actually outlined exactly how you're going to be graded. As a matter of fact, you could let look at your own work at the end and uh, see exactly how much grade you're going to get. And I follow, like I said, the rubric I mean, uh, carefully. So 
usually it's a good practice to leave the objective until you understand. But it's clear in this case that what we're trying to do in here, basically check the, uh, the uh, f second law of uh, Newton, namely F equals to MA. So what we're gonna do in this lab, this is how you state basically your objectives, by the way. So you're going to verify or check the, uh, the second law of Newton. It's gonna be on your own words, basically. Make sure that you put it in your own terms. Uh, by doing two things, either changing the force and measuring the acceleration. So in this case, it should be linear. Uh, that's what we expect, at least, if the uh, Newton's second law works. It should be a line. Or by keeping the force the same and varying the mass. And in this case, also, it's going to be a line, except that it's going to be an inverse line. I mean, 1 over uh, inverse law. So it's going, not going to be a line. But if I draw it against 1 over m, it's going to actually be a line, too. Okay, so both of them are going to be lines. The first one is proportional to m, uh, to f, I'm sorry. So it's going to be line. The second one is proportional to 1 over m. So if I'm careful enough, that is also going to be a line. And the slopes, in the first case, is the inverse of the mass. In the second case, it's actually the force. So that's basically, in a nutshell, what the lab is. So let me, let me put it in the terms of uh, things that probably can be, let me get the tools in here, common tools, that is and grab a pen. So basically, this is what we're checking in here. I don't know if I can write in here, can I? No, can I do it in here? Oops. Yeah, can I, I can do that there. Okay, so the f the, what we're checking is F equals to MA, basically. Okay, that's the law that we're checking in this case. By doing one of two things. First of all, we're finding A equals to F over M. By varying the force, F, in this case, we're going to find the slope. It should be a line like this one, OK? A line whose slope is actually 1 over m. That's what it should be. That is here, in this case, the independent variable is the force, and the dependent variable is the acceleration. Or we're going to do it the other way around. We're going to draw, again, this line is 1 over m, and this is still the acceleration. And in this case, also, it's going to be a line, OK? The slope in this case is going to be the force itself. So the slope in this case changes. If we do that, we would have successfully basically uh, verified Newton's second law. That's basically what this experiment about. Now the setup for the lab, if we were to do this lab in, uh, in class, is the following. You have a hanging mass in here, usually it's small, 10 grams, 20 grams, 30 grams. That's what we set up with. And you have in here a, a, a cart that has a weight usually around 250, 240, 230 grams, depending basically on the, the, how light it is. But that's basically what you have in this case. But you have additional weights and you have additional masses you add to it. Now, if you let go of this and if we neglect the friction, this thing starts to roll this way, okay? In the lab, they tell you to be very careful to ha catch the uh, the uh, the... Uh, the hanging mass before it reaches the ground, because if it reaches the ground, this thing starts to cause uh, uh, data that is not properly read. I mean, the graph that is given by the, uh, the capstone, basically device, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, is going to be basically not good. I mean, it's going to mess up around the time when it hits the ground. So you want to catch it and stop the reading there, and you can repeat the experiment again and again and again and again, as long as basically as much as you want, okay? So that's basically, by changing the masses, by changing the hanging weights, in which case you're changing the force. So I put 10 gram first, collect the acceleration on the card by itself. Put another, to, uh, change the 10 gram to 20 gram. Now, repeat the experiment, get new acceleration. There is more force now, so it should accelerate more. You put the 30 gram again, and the same card by itself. And now you should even get more acceleration. So what happened then is you take one of the weights and you put it on top of the car and you repeat the whole process again. You start with a 10 gram. You should get less acceleration than the first time because now you have more inertia. You have the mass of the car plus the ad ad additional weight, the additional mass to it. So it's going to accelerate, but less than the first time. Then you remove the 10 gram, the hanging mass of the 10 gram, and you put instead of a 20 gram, it's going to accelerate more. Then you do repeat the whole experiment with a 30 gram and going to accelerate more. Now you take the third weight and you, top it, you put it on top of the other weight. Basically, it will be the card plus one weight, the first weight, plus the second weight. Now you have a combined of three masses. 
and you repeat the whole process again, namely put 10 gram, 20 gram, and 30 gram. Now you have a bunch of data for you that is with different masses. Remember, you change the, uh, this, this masses, okay? And you change the actual force in here, okay? The math is here, okay? This is basically uh, the free body diagram when we drew the free body diagram. The forces for the, uh, uh, the big mass M is just coming from the tension. The forces on the hanging mass is, uh, no, actually the whole forces on the hanging mass is here, okay? It's coming from the tension, it's on weight. And this is, we ignore this part in here because this is just the fact that the cart cannot go up and down, that's why it's zero, okay? So this part is not relevant for this type of motion because the motion is going on a horizontal plane. So the two equations, one and two, once you solve them, you'll find this basically equation. Okay, for the tension, and you sub for the tension, you find the acceleration. Ignore the theory at this point. Again, we're focusing on the lab. We're, we don't even care about the theory. We just want to do a lab and understand it. Here is question one first. Note that equations one, here is equation one, and equation two use the same symbol for acceleration. And it's asking you why is that? Okay. For both the objects and the tension on each side. So the same tension T and the same uh, acceleration for both masses. Here is a string I have before me in here. The string has a negligible mass. So that's your, your, your defense, that's your answer. It has a negligible mass compared to the masses that we have in here. So since it has a negligible mass, the tension on both sides of the spring must be the same. Here is what this is talking about. The tension on this mass, the, this side, and the tension on this mass side are the same because they're connected through the same string. If they're not the same, what happened in this case, I'm gonna apply F equals to MA to it. And let's say there is an imbalance of tension on the spring, the mass is zero. So the acceleration would be an infinite number, would be huge. This string will fly to the other end of the universe. So for the only, the, the only reason that this is not going anywhere is because the two tensions cancels, cancel on both sides of the, of the uh, string. So the two tensions must be the same. And that is the answer to it because the string is supposed to be massless. Okay? That's the answer to the first part of the question. Okay? Or the second part of the question for the tension. So the tension on the two sides of the string is the same because if it's not the same, then the string will accelerate indefinitely. And this is not happening. I mean, this string is going nowhere. So I must be pulling on it on both sides with the same tension. You guys understand this part? The second part in here, it says why the acceleration is the same. Because the string doesn't stretch. If this end moves an inch, the other end also moves with the same inch. Do you guys understand? So if this side of the string accelerates with an A, the other side also must accelerate with an A. So let's go back into the uh, graph to see what's going on. If this mass M accelerates when one meter per second, per second, this one also accelerates one meter per second per second. Because this string doesn't stretch. If it stretches, then one part of the string could accelerate more than the other part of the string. Again, the answer to this question is, the acceleration is the same because the string is non-stretching. The tension is the same because the string is massless. That is really what saves the day in here. You guys understand the question and the answer? Okay, good. So let's move on to the uh, rest of the lab. Now this is the setup. This is if we actually walk into the lab, this is how it looks like. Okay, so let me zoom in. Can I zoom in onto this? Okay, so this is the actual setup on the lab. So you have, this is the pulley, basically where the string is. This is where the, 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 the track is. This is where the dynamic cart is. This is the cart, no, the cart that it moves. There is a string attached to it and it's going around. And this is the hanging mass, actually. It's, it's, a, it's a hook. 
and it comes with uh, with different masses, basically 20 grams and so on and so forth, 10 grams, 20 grams, and 30 grams. And this is the RMS that we have seen last time, actually, in the previous lab, that measures the acceleration for you. So this is actually the device that is going to give me the data. But of course, we're not live to do this in the lab. So basically, we're here. So basically, that's the setup that we're going to go with into the GeoGebra. But that's basically the setup. If you walk tomorrow in the lab, this is what you're going to see, and you understand what the purpose of this lab is, what the setup is for, for what. Again, this is the instruction I was telling you about, what you do here and there and all of that. So, so we're doing this online. We're going to click on the link in here. But before I do the link, let me go first of all and try to answer some more questions, OK? Does your data at this point, you cannot answer this question until you actually do the data. So the question is, does your data show that M is, if M is big, a is small, meaning if I put more and more masses, more and more weights on top of here, the acceleration should be less and less. You guys understand that? So that's the question. You should do the experiment and you should check it to see if it does. If it doesn't, you have to answer sincerely and say, hey, my data is not showing that. So I cannot do this. I mean, this is not uh, working. Do you guys understand that? So. Uh, so that's the question in here, and I, you need to, uh, and then uh, does it seem also, so if you put more, if you, instead of 10 gram, you put 20 gram, or instead of 10, 20 gram, you put 30 grams on the hanging mass. Does this give you more and more acceleration then? Okay. So if the data is doing that, that means you have a good working setup. That means everything is working fine. You guys understand? So the question in here is related to your data. Look at your data with the, the, the cart by itself, you should look at the accelerations in here and compare them to the cart plus mass one, okay? If you see that this mass, this acceleration, they should be less. This ones, they should be higher than this ones, and this one, they should be even higher than this ones. So this numbers in here should be higher than this ones, and this number should be higher than this ones because you have more inertia now. You have the mass of the cart plus the mass of the red uh, marked uh, weight, and the one that is blue mark, that's how they are actually in the lab. We mark them with two, two types of uh, tape on top of them. If you put all masses, this acceleration should be less than this one, and this one should be less than that one. You guys understand? So that's the first part. The second part in here, on the same set of data, this one or this one, you have more hanging mass in here than in here. So... This acceleration should be less than this one, and this one should be less than this one. In other words, this acceleration should be higher, and then this one and this one should be higher than that one. Remember, when you compare these sides, they have to match, actually. If I have to compare the 10 gram with this cart, I have to compare it with this one with 10, with 10 gram, and I have to compare it with that one. That is the consistency for the same force. You should have less accelerations in here. Now, if you're comparing the 30 gram weight versus the mass of the cart versus the 30 gram weight uh, versus the mass of the cart plus the blue uh, dotted uh, weight plus the 30 grams. So make sure you compare this side by side, okay? And look at this. This acceleration should be more than this acceleration and this acceleration should be more than that acceleration. And for example, this acceleration should be more than this acceleration and this acceleration should be more than that acceleration. If you have that, that means you're in good shape, that you have everything so far looks at least qualitatively. You have confirmed uh, Newton's second law. You didn't do any numbers, but it looks like the more inertia, the less acceleration. The more force, this is where the force is coming, the more acceleration. So this is what this question is about. It's related to this table. So at this point, I cannot give you the answer for it unless you actually do the simulation. Okay? So, and then we're going to go to, there are only four questions in this lab, so you don't have a lot of questions. Suppose you collected the following data. Okay. We have this data for this question. Ignore the lab for a moment. We're looking at something else, okay? And uh, you, you plotted this graph, or you saw this graph. The question is saying, you and your lab has the following, identify the three mistakes. There are three mistakes in this, in this graph. Okay. If you read carefully about the graph, it needs to be, first of all, 
you cannot invent points in it that don't exist. Look at the points in here. For the distance one meter, I have the time 0 0.45, which is probably correct, okay? This is the point one. For two meters, I have uh, the value of 0.63, which is correct, okay, more or less. So I assume this is correct, okay? For four, I have 0.89, which is probably correct. For eight, I have 1.26, so data looks good. Where in the world did this come from? So that's a mistake. Do you guys understand? So it's asking you to list any mistakes. This is one mistake. You cannot put points that don't exist in the table. So if you collect data for your lab and you have only certain points, you cannot put points that are not in the table. So this is mistake number one. Mistake number two on a lab, let's look at the previous uh, lab. This is a lab that is properly done. It's labeled the X axis and the Y axis and the units for them. So that's, doesn't have any labels. That's mistake number two, okay? So this is two mistakes already in this, uh, this graph, okay? Because you don't have the labels. You should have a distance in meters and you should have a time in seconds in here, okay? The third mistake that you're going to see in here, look at the distance. Between zero and one, it's one unit. Between one and two, it's one unit. Between two and four, it looks the same distance between one and two. Whereas you know that there are two units between, the, so this should be three and this should be a four. You guys understand that? So the scale is not correct. As a matter of fact, between four and eight, it's the same distance between two and four and this between zero and one or between one and two. So the scale also is wrong. So those are at least three mistakes in this, gra in this graph. Does you guys understand the answer to this question? You're supposed to list at least three mistakes in it. One of them, it's showing extra data that is not in the table. The second one, it's not properly scaled, at least on the x-axis. You can clearly, clearly see that the distance is not correct between the, the things. And then the other one, uh, the axes are not labeled. Okay? So that's basically the third question. When you look at this, you should be able to fix it yourself. This is preparing you for your own data, preparing you for your own graphs. So before we go there, let me uh, see if I can. Before we go there, you're asked to fix this graph. You have this point and you have that point. You have that point and you have that point. You have all of these points. You plot them. Make sure you choose a properly scaled. If this is one unit, this is probably two. This is three somewhere, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then so it's properly scaled. Make sure you label the axes. This is distance in meters. This is time in seconds. And you put the values in here. And you can you connect only. You have data for one somewhere, data for two somewhere, data for four somewhere. You skip a three, you go to four. You have data for four somewhere. And you have data for eight, OK, which is somewhere in here. And you connect the three if you like. But the data that is coming in here is coming from that table. You guys understand on how to fix this graph? Yes or no? Okay. So at least I'm hoping that everybody, okay, very good. So we have that. That is just to prepare you for what is com coming. This is what is coming. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna replicate this table for your case, okay? Remember, we have the cart by itself. So we're gonna put its mass in here. It's not necessarily 250 grams. Yours may be more or less, okay? It's not 500 grams when you add to it the weight. Yours may be more or less. It's not 750 grams when you add the second weight, but it's gonna be more or less. And the acceleration may or may not be these numbers, okay? So they may be different than these numbers. So you're gonna make this table as part of your assignment. So this is just a sample table. This is not your table. If you have this table now, this is how you plot the, the graphs, okay? You put the 200 because you have 200 in here. You put the 400, you put the 600, and you put the 800. So for this graph, let me uh, make it bigger because it's too small in here, at least on my screen, okay? So now you have the acceleration as a function of mass. So this is the acceleration we're drawing, okay? As a function of mass. So here, I have the 250 grams. 
First of all, I have the point 30. Here is the 30, okay? Here is the 30. What is the, I'm sorry. Yeah, here is this. Uh, wait a minute. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here is the 30. It's 90 centimeter per second squared, okay? So here is the data for the 30, about 90. Then for the 250 grams, I still have to represent the point for the 20. The 20 is 60. You guys see that? And then I have another point in here for the 10 kilodyne, which is the 10 grams basically, which is equal, which is this point, okay? Which is 30 centimeter per uh, second squared, okay? So now I'm done with this side. I'm gonna go and move to the second mass, which is about 500 grams. Yours is gonna be more or less, okay? So don't go with these numbers. It's gonna be a, similar to this number. Again, it's 45 now for the 30 grams. So it's 45, I find 45, here is 40. Here is somewhere probably 50, somewhere in between. So here is 45, I draw the point. Now I move to the 20. Uh, or I could have come down this way. The 20 is going to give me 30. So here is my 30. It should be the same point as this one. Yeah, because these two points are the same, on the same height. And the 15 for the 10. Here is 15 somewhere, okay? And then move to the last point, which is 750 grams. Yours may be more or less than 750. Uh, then again, I have 30, which is the same point in here for all of this. Then 20 which is less, and then finally you have the last point which is in here, okay? But remember, on the x-axis I have mass, on the y-axis I have acceleration. I'm gonna go back to the same data and do the same thing, but now force on the x-axis and the acceleration on the, uh, on the, uh, the uh, y-axis. So basically, same data. Now, let me erase all of these things because it's too many now. We have the, uh, yeah. What is the selection point? Never mind. Okay, so sorry about that, okay? Now, I have to be careful now. I have the force now on the x-axis and I have the acceleration. The force on the x-axis here is the force, okay? So I'm gonna go with the 10 first. Here is the 10, but I have three points for the 10. One point for the 30, for the 250 kilogram, for, for, the, for the cart by itself, which is roughly about 250 grams. Now for the cart and one of them weights, 15, and for the cart and the two weights, which is 10. So for the cart by itself, it's this point, which is about 30, this one. For the cart and one weight, it's the number was 15. So I'm going to go midway, 15. And for the cart and three weights, it was 10. So I'm going to go in here. Then move now to the 20. So the x-axis now is this numbers, not this ones. The first one, the x-axis is in here, and I'm reading it this way. Now the x-axis is here, and I'm reading it this way. So again, for the 20, I have three points, 60, 30, and 20. 60, 30, and 20. And again, I'm looking at it from the, uh, uh, the lightest down to the, uh, to the heaviest, okay? And finally, the 30 gram, I have a 90, 45, and 30. 90, 45, and 30, okay? So I have all three points, except now I have acceleration as a, force, as a function of force, which is clearly a linear function as I expected. And this one, Oksha, is more or less linear, okay? So this is how the graph should look like for you, okay? The table should look like something like this. And uh, so this is the table you're gonna make in here. You're gonna take your mass of the cart by itself. You're gonna take the mass of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, mass plus one cart, plus one weight, mass plus the two weights in here. And then you're gonna put the accelerations. Where do you get this information? You get it from this table. We're gonna to come to it where you get it, okay? You get it from all of these tables in here, okay? 
but you have three accelerations which you're going to average in here for mass of the cart, 10 grams, and the acceleration. Mass uh, of, I mean, weight of 20 grams, the cart by itself, and then the, uh, you average this three, and so on and so forth, okay? So let me go into uh, GeoGebra now and to actually get this data. Okay, it's easier to get this data first. Okay, so we click on the link. It takes us to this experiment apparatus. Please remember, it's critical for this lab, between each two drops, you're going to uh, reset the lab, okay? You reset the lab. Reset means you take back this mass to where you started from. Instead of holding it by hand, what I did in here for you guys is that there is a block in there. It blocks the, uh, this, this big mass in here, okay? So right now, I have a 10 gram, and the combined mass is that of the cart by itself only. So I go in my table and ready. Okay, I'm sorry. I made it uh, zoomed out. So you go to your table. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, are you, am, I, am I not sharing my screen? Probably I'm not, am I? I was not sharing the screen. No, okay. You guys need to catch me before I catch myself, okay? So when you click on the link, this is where you are. Okay, you are on the second law of Newton, the apparatus, okay? It's similar to that lab. Again, what I was saying in here, between each two uh, readings, you're going to reset uh, this, this button in here. So right now, I have the cart by itself, which is 238 grams. Uh, 38. Don't read the point, okay? I just put 238 grams. It's not going to be that sensitive, okay? So in the, in, the, in the table, when you go back to the table, just put 238 for the cart, okay? And then you're going to release it. So right now somebody is holding it, actually, okay? You hold the cart before releasing it, and somebody actually goes and starts collecting data. So we're going to release this, and it's actually accelerating. I don't know if you see it or not. Because 10 grams is not going to produce a lot of acceleration. Okay. Once it hits the, uh, the, the point, it should stop. Then it gives me the acceleration. It's 42.41 centimeter per second squared. So at this point, this is the acceleration. Let me stop the, uh, the recording in here and go back to the... Uh, so another recording. Stop the uh, the data in there. So I go. I come to my table. This was two hundred and thirty-eight. Okay, and this acceleration was forty-two point something. Let me go and look at it quickly here. Forty-two point four one. Okay, forty-two point forty-one. Okay, centimeter per second. I don't have to do anything with this one in here. I'm going to repeat it again, okay? So I'm going to st stop sharing the screen, come back to my data, which is here. So this is what I was talking about. You have to reset it, meaning you have to take this one and put it back. Okay? So I'm going to start resetting it again, okay? And release it. Okay, if it gives me the same numbers, give me the same numbers, okay? I remember we're doing a simulation on the, on the, on, uh, the computer, which is not really the real situation. The real situation will always give you slightly different numbers than the uh, initial ones, okay? It gave me a slightly different number than the first one. So it's... When we did the second trial, it gave me an average acceleration of 38.72. So I'm going to go back into my data in here. Come back into my, where is the shared screen? So it's 38.72. OK. I need at least one more. So stop sharing the screen. Go back to my. Uh, Experiment. Remember to reset. It's critical that you do that. Reset and release one more time. Okay. Okay. 
43.02. So come in here, stop this. Go back into my uh, table and do it 43.2. Please do not give me this number because this is my trial. Your number might be different, okay? So we're done with this part. Before we do the 20 grams, let me do a quick calculation for you guys. I'm gonna pull a calculator in here. Copy these three numbers. Can I copy this? No, you can't. Okay. If you need help with this part, please let me know, okay? So I'm gonna come to this calculator in here. And let me stop sharing the screen to show you what I'm doing so that you guys see exactly what I'm doing. With a calculator, you can do this one. So I'm going to stop sharing that uh, and share it with you this calculator. This is called Microsoft Mathematics, which is uh, useful for... Uh... So I'm going to add the three numbers. Somebody was saying something? Yes, you reset each time. Yeah, and you do the acceleration three times. Remember, you're going to do it for so many times, okay? You're going to do three times the, uh, the, uh, the uh, and you reset between them. What you do actually in the lab, you move back the apparatus back to the starting point because the mass has fallen now, so you have to raise it back so that you repeat again. You guys see that? That's what you do actually in the lab. So that's what the reset button does in your case, puts it back to where you started from. So I'm going to go back to my data. And it was 42.41, the first read. Am I sharing? No, I'm not. Okay, let me uh, share with you that screen because I want you guys to be comfortable with what I'm doing so that you can see exactly. It's just adding the three numbers and dividing them by three. So I'm going to share with you. So the first one was 42.41 plus 38.72 plus 40, was it 43.02? Let me make sure I have the numbers correct, okay? Yeah. So these were the numbers. Now the sum of all of these three numbers divided by three. That's how we find the average. Divide the whole thing by three, okay? So my average is 41.38. The average of the averages is 41.38. So the reason why I'm saying this is step is, is good because, let me st sh stop sharing, and I'm going to pick up 41.38 as my average. So stop sharing that screen, and now go back to my PDF file. Okay, are you guys seeing the PDF file with the numbers in it? Yes? I need the verbal confirmation. When I am in sharing mode, I sometimes don't see the chat. I try, and then close. that's why I close it. Okay, let me look at it. Yeah. Okay, okay, very good. So, this part is done. So now I'm going to go to this table. So I know when the mass of the cart was 238, the average of the averages was 41.38. 41.38. Okay, so I'm done with this part, okay? So I did the two tables now in here. So now go back to this table in here. We're gonna do the 20 grams now. So we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna leave you on your own to finish it, uh, to finish the rest of the table. So I'm gonna go back and share with you the actual experiment. The first step is to reset, put it back, so that I'm ready to add the blue mass now, okay? Now, the total is 479, Point twelve. So I'm going to go back into my data and put 400. Okay, let me stop sharing that screen. So it was not 500. For my case, it was less. And that's exactly what you, what you expect in the lab too. You're not going to get the 500. Okay, that's just a... So it's going to be 479. 479, because we're not going to pick up the decimal points. I told you that for the masses. So that is, stop sharing the screen and go back into my uh, lab experiment. So I added it. Before that, I reset it and I added it. 
Now I'm going to release, okay, at 10 gram. It's moving, actually, believe me, but it's moving so slow. Actually, I slowed it down in purpose because this lab, if we do it in actual life, and if I uh, expedited it, it will see that it's going to be super fast and it's uh, sometimes very hard to catch it and push the button. And so, but since it's, uh, it's, it's uh, simulated, so I made it the whole animation to slow down, okay? So that you actually vi visually see that it's accelerating and you have the chance to go between your data and so on and so forth, okay? Now, once it hits the, uh, the, the stopper, it's going to give me a reading of 20.48. So again, I'm gonna stop the, record, the, the, the sharing of this screen and go back into my PDF file and put 20.48. Oops, that's I'm not writing. 20.48. Okay, I guess you get the hang of it now. Can you guys uh, tell me what I'm going to do next? What's the next step? Are you gonna add? Um, okay, before I add. Oh, you're gonna re reset? Okay, <laughs> so that's gonna be the question of the day, okay. <laughs> okay, so make sure. Is that the discussion question? <laughs> that's the discussion question. So between okay. each trials, do not forget to put your mask back where you started from, okay? So that's your starting point. And then change the weight, okay? Is that what you were going to say? Yes? Yes, that's what? yeah, okay. that's what I was gonna say. We're gonna put 20 grams in here, okay? So now we're in good shape, 20 grams. Make sure you click outside, okay? Mm -hmm. And then release now, correct? Mm -hmm. So with the 20 grams, it should be more than 20 uh, uh, centimeter per second per second now. It should accelerate faster because we have more mass now. Okay, so let's wait for it to go around. So the question of the day, what is the necessary step between each two experiments? It's going to be that reset button, okay? Make sure you hit the reset button. So the reading right now is 38.51. So I'm gonna stop the, record, the uh, sharing of this screen and go to my PDF file and put 38.51. So this is 38.51. You know what's gonna happen next. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and I'm gonna go back into this lab. And what is the first step we should do again? Reset. Okay, reset. <laughs> okay, I hope that you guys got it. Because you want your setup to be there. And the next step? Change the mass. Yeah, the, the, this mass, the weight basically. So we're gonna put 30 grams now, okay? And then release, okay? So it should accelerate faster than the first one because now I have a bigger uh, weight now for pulling it down. This is the mass M that we're talking about, we're changing, okay? So it should be more than 38. It's 60.51, okay? So I'm gonna put a stop setting in here. So I'm gonna go back into my PDF file and put 60.51, 60.51. For some reason, yeah, okay. So now I have, yeah. So we change the weight every time we, for every experiment? Yes, uh, is there something wrong with this number? Was it correct? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't change this number. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, completely. I messed up your instructions, I'm sorry. Uh, can I undo this, guys? We should not change this 20. We change it only once. Yeah. We should get around 20 in here, everybody. Did everybody catch this mistake or not? I hope you guys did. I saw it. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, wasn't paying it. I was paying attention, but I don't know if that was... Uh... Yeah, yeah, this is a mistake I did, okay? Did everybody grab... Let me, let me, let me make sure at least the ones who are here, they caught the mistake where I just did. Did everybody see the mistake or not? 
Yes or no? Okay, at least one person did, and at least two people. Professor, so on the first stimulation, I noticed that you kept the 10 grams on the mask the whole way through. And then on the second one, you changed, you changed it to 20. That's correct? my mistake. I should have okay. kept the 20, 20, 20, all three attempts. All the way through. Okay. Yes, all the way through. And then the third one, do the 30, okay? Okay, makes sense, right. Do you guys understand? I hope everybody caught this mistake. I did it because I was excited about these things. Okay? I hope you guys caught it. You keep, yes, Taryn. You keep. The first one was correct. We kept the 10 gram and we just repeated. Reset, repeat, reset, repeat, reset, repeat, and then average it. The second time, we should change it. We reset first and we change it to 20 and then Reset, repeat, reset, repeat, reset, repeat, find the average, okay? The third time, reset, repeat, reset, repeat, and then find the average, okay? You guys see that? Except, can I restart the whole thing with you guys? Yes, no? Yeah, that would, that would probably be... Okay, helpful. let's erase all of this data right now because it doesn't make sense. And hopefully you guys caught the first step. The first step was perfect, 100% correct. There is no argument about it. No ifs or buts or anything. Does everybody understand that part? Yes? Okay. Yes. Let's repeat the second column together so that we have confidence in it too, okay? So I'm gonna sh uh, go back into the, uh, the data. What is the share thing in here? I'm sorry about that, okay? Sometimes you get into the thinking and you're ahead of yourself, which is not good. I'm going to remove the masses, okay? So right now, the mass should be back only to the mass of the cart. Right now, it's 240 grams, okay? Slightly more or less, doesn't matter. So we're going to do now the 20 grams. The 20 grams for the cart by itself only, okay? Remember, the first column was the cart by itself for 10 grams. Now we're going to do the cart by itself for 20 grams. We're gonna release. We're gonna get a number. Seventy six point eighty seven. That is the number that I should use. I'm gonna stop sharing. Go in here and share seventy six. So this is about 240. It's the same thing, okay? So we're going to average this. 76.87. 76 what is it? 87? I think. Okay, let me quickly pick on this thing in here. Yes, that's correct. So I'm going to stop sharing that screen and go back into my experiment. In other words, I'm going to reset first. That is still the valid question, okay? The valid question for the day is research between every attempt. Keep the, the mass of the cart by itself. Redo just this for the 20 grams, three times. So we did it three times for 10 grams. We're going to do it three times for 20 grams. So 79.31. So we're going to go back into my data sheets and put... 79.31, so I'm gonna go quickly in there. 79.31, 79.31, okay. And continue now with the, with this one. The first thing is reset and just release, okay. Seventy-six point eighty-seven, which is identical to the first value. Okay, should be more or less the same value. 76.87. Okay, now we're ready to do something else. After I record this data, I'm gonna come back in here, reset, and now we're gonna change the 30 grams. The card by itself. Okay, so we're gonna do the card by itself with the 10 gram, and you do it three times, the cart by itself, 
and you do it for 20 grams three times and the card by itself and you do it three times with the uh, 30 grams okay so now we're going to release it i should get even higher acceleration than the first time and it's going to be more or less the same acceleration okay it should be more than 76 78 whatever we had before okay 122.63 stop release again Remember, I should have put that number in the first column. 117.13, that's the second average. Stop and release one more time. And that is my final one, 113.47. So I have my, all of the data now is filled for the first ones. Do not forget you're supposed to find their averages and go back to the second table and put the average there. You guys understand that step? Yeah, we already did it. So let me stop sharing the screen and I'll go to the PDF to make sure that we have the PDF fully, uh, fully understood. So I put the second set, 122, 117, and 113 in here for the 30 grams. Remember, I should have kept the same mass in here, which should be the same number, but I changed it somewhere at some point, changed cards actually. You guys sharing the screen. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me... Uh... Let me go back into what is the Zoom thing in here. Share PDF file. Okay, so again, I have filled this data. Now I have done this one. I found the first average in the similar fashion at this number to this number to this number and divide them by three. That's the average. If you have difficulty with that, please let me know, okay? The same thing, we found 122 in here, 117 in here, and 113 in here. Find that average. Once you find that averages, you come in here. The second average should be here, about 77 or something. The third average will be here, which is about 118 or something like that. And that's that. That's done. Okay. Now we go to this level. Now we're going to add the cart plus one mass and repeat the whole thing again. So we're going to stop sharing that screen. Now come back to the lab. And we're going to first step is reset. Now add the blue mass, okay? That is when we do the whole thing all over again. We start with the 10 gram first. Okay? Release. Then reset. Release. Then reset. Release, then reset. Three times. And then... We change the 10 grams to 20 grams. Release, then reset. Release, then reset. Release, then reset. Three times. Then we put the 30 grams now and do the same thing over and over and over until we find the three averages. We put the averages in the last table and we fill the first table. Okay? After we're done with all of that, we're going to add now the two masses. Okay, the two masses. Add both masses. So for my case, it's 772.27 grams. This is to remove all masses in your back to the cart, okay? So this is just back to where you are. So this helps you to reset everything to the way it was. For my case, the two masses plus the cart is 722 uh, grams. And again, we release at 10 grams three times. We release at 20 grams three times. We release at 30 grams three times. And we would have filled all the table, the first table, average, and do the second table. Does everybody understand where we are in terms of the data? Yes. Everybody yes? Very good. We have two or three people. Okay, very good. So now we're ready to move on with the lab because that's the most critical part is collecting your data. Once you have your data, you go back into your lab, assuming this is filled now, all of this table is filled. You're going to answer this question now, okay? Based on your table, what do you see? Correct? Compare this row with this row. Compare this row with that row. Compare this row with this row. Compare again this row now with this one. This row with this one. And this row with this one. You should see consistency. You should see the more of these masses come in, the more of these com masses come in, the less acceleration is going to be for the same force. Now, the more force, you should see the higher acceleration here, and in here, and in here, 
Okay? So that should answer that question now. Again, now uh, question three has to do with this table. I already helped you with the answer to it and helped you also how to fix that. Now you come to this graph in here. Remember, you already have from this table, what is table two? Yeah, this table two now, okay? You have the mass, what is table two? I'm sorry, I lost my tables in here. Okay, this is table one. Yes, this is table two. This is the one that uh, we're gonna use for. So remember, we have, uh, we have the cart by itself. We have the average acceleration for 10, for 20, and for 30. So we're gonna come in here. We have the cart by itself, whatever it is, 240, 230, doesn't matter. Put in a number in here. You have for the 10 gram, how much the average was, for 20 grams, how much it is, and for 30 grams, how much it is. You put the, the mass of the cart plus one of the masses plus M1, and you put the average acceleration in here, the average acceleration in here, and the average acceleration in here. Again, this is just reading from your other table, okay? From the previous table, from this table, I think it's labeled four in here, or three, okay? You just take the mass M1 plus this one for 10 grams, you find the acceleration, you're gonna plug it in here, okay? And so on and so forth. And this one also the same thing. Now we have this table filled. Graphing it is as I explained in here, similar to this table. You should point now, put the points on the graph and you're done with this lab. So now you're gonna graph these things. It should, uh, uh, does your first graph show? It should be a line. In other words, does your graph, first graph look like this? Here is your first graph, by the way, it's this graph. That's the first one because it's telling you to draw acceleration as a function of force. What is the acceleration as a function of force? So this is your first graph, okay? Is the force proportional to the acceleration? The second graph is this one. Is the force proportional as one over mass, okay? That is, the, do they look like this in other words? This is the force as a function of mass. And this is the, f I mean, the acceleration as a force, a function of mass. And this is the acceleration as a, f a function of force. And if you have done all of this, you should have with confidence have confirmed the second law of Newton that A is equal to F, uh, I mean, F, A is equal to F over M. That is basically the verbiage that you're gonna proceed with it in here based on the graphs, based on your data. You guys understand the lab? I mean, it's work. It's not supposed to be a... Yes, from your numbers, from your tables. Remember that exercise before it, Amanda, was to help you find mistakes with graphs and fix graphs so that you do your own graph, okay? And again, if you have difficulty with it, please let me know. The last table, which is the summary of the previous table, actually, table four, I believe, or table whatever, the last table was the one that should help you with both graphs, okay? Because it has, on this side, it has the, uh, the masses. On this side, it has the, uh, the, uh, the forces, okay? In the middle, it has the acceleration. So you can plot it one way or the other. I'm gonna be here until 9, 10 p.m. Uh, you can graph it with the graph that I gave you or Excel or something, okay? That's a good question, Jeffrey. Do you, are you guys comfortable with Excel? Anyone worked with Excel graphing at all? Okay, at least one person did. Okay, if you if you know Excel, you can graph it with Excel. If not, do it by hand, okay? I'll take it. Okay. So uh, the session is going to remain open. Again, like I said, I'm going to stop the recording and I'm gonna be here. I'm going to change speakers so that I can hear you because I'm gonna stop this speaker and have the computer speaker. So if I'm gonna go and grab something because my coffee is really running out right now, I'm gonna go and get something and just shout the question. I will uh, answer it to you guys. Does this sound good? Do you have any questions for me first for the lab? That is something that needs to be clarified. Okay, so I'm not gonna let you, I'm gonna let you working together. And I'm gonna change the speakers right now. So it's gonna be this speaker. 
Can somebody say something because I want to hear it? Yes. Okay, I can hear you, yes. Okay, I heard you, yes. Okay, so let me change also the microphone to the computer. Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera and this, uh, the microphone, but I'm going to be around, okay? Let me know if you need help with it. Right, the discussion for this lab is not up, so I'm going to post it, okay? I'm going to post it right now. Okay, see you guys. I'm here, okay? I just posted the uh, the discussion session, okay, Karen? Oh, I'm sorry, I did not stop the recording. <laughs> 